Good morning. I thought maybe today I'd come to you from the sun for Sunshine Lecture. I'm here at our wonderful retreat center, City of Light Sanctuary. And I just wanted to, as I'm sitting here, I thought it would be appropriate for you to, for me to talk to you about rebounding, renewal, rebirth. I see Mother Nature slowly rebounding from the winter. There's green here and there coming through the dead leaves. And I see all of us probably having to go through the same thing. And when spring comes, we all are happy because all the new growth looks so beautiful. And I wonder if this time of this time of our planet, if that's not what God has intended. Never in the history of humanity has the entire planet shut down. And so I can't believe that that is not divinely ordained in some manner. It has to be because it's never happened before. And maybe Mother Earth needed to rejuvenate. And maybe this was a lesser of two evil. I have no idea. All of these are speculations. And I know that a lot of people are suffering. But if you're looking at this, I know that we have a roof of our head and we have food to eat. Maybe not exactly what you want, but we have food to eat. And so if we can, if this is what we need to do is to rebirth, because I also know from history, from various scriptures and from what Archangel Michael has told us that we are about to go into the golden age, which we call Satya Yuga. And Kali Yuga is coming to an end. And I also know that in the last 10 years, or in the last 10 years, 20 years, we're in 2020, in the last 10 years, 20 years, the discordant energies had to be exposed, and they were being exposed slowly. And so we cannot move into a new age unless we, there is some change. And I'm looking around here and Mother Nature always comes back and very quickly. And she is so beautiful and the bugs too. <laughs> okay, she is so beautiful. So maybe this is our time. Maybe if we hurry up and do this, this whole thing can get over with faster. I know there are a lot of people suffering unnecessarily, unfortunately, and we are not supporting them as we should. And maybe that's what we have to learn, that we all have to support one another. Because right now, Compassion is more available to us. Being in the situation we are right now, isolated, we have to think about our feelings. And then we have to think about the people that don't have food when we're, when we're trying to go to the grocery store. And it's taking time. And everything is taking time. Maybe we need to just come back and think about things. I don't know what the future will bring. And I don't know why this has come about. But I know one thing, 
we are going to go into a new age. That is absolute. That has been promised. That has been foreseen. And maybe we're not moving fast enough. And I would like you to just go and enjoy. Look at the sun. It always comes out. It is, it is cool here, but with the sun, it feels good. It feels warm. And I like us to really start thinking about our feelings. Maybe this is a time to look at our feelings. Our feelings become, come before our speech. And then from the speech comes action. So we need to think about things first according to our feeling. Then we will be able to act accordingly. When we're busy running around and doing the things that we're doing, we're not thinking about the feeling so much and we're just acting. Sometimes just in a reactive, not even knowing what we're doing and why we're doing it. So maybe it is time for us to look at our feelings. I am right now in a most beautiful place and I feel good. This was, the, this was ordained for us to have this retreat center by Archangel Michael. So that Mother Earth can rejuvenate and that we can open the ley lines between the, within the planet so that she can uh, breathe again from all the things that we have done to, to, to destroy her. And you have noticed within two weeks she has rebounded so quickly. The ley line between here and Mount Shasta is the 42 parallel. It's the same and the energy here is so wonderful. So then naturally I will feel good. And then when I come back to New York City and when you come back and then you have to start thinking about where am I going to get the food, how am I going to get dressed, what am I going to do, I'm home and so forth. But no, begin to think about your life. Begin to think about are you doing what is the most wonderful part of you to be doing? Are you doing what your purpose in life is? Are you doing your dharma? I think this is the time to think about that. This is a time to review, to, to think, is my life the way I want it to be? This is the time to really review. Don't get involved. Know what's going on, but don't get involved in all the things that this earth is now going through. Step back and look at it from a more distant perspective. If you look up at the sun and the sun hits your forehead and you feel the energy of the sun, we all feel happy. And the sun when we look up at the sun, it actually activates the pineal gland. That's why in the winter we are more depressed and in the sun we are full. I would like you to take this time and imagine that the sun is on your face. Or maybe you go outside your door and put your head towards the sun like I'm doing here. And maybe you will feel better. What will happen in the future? We don't know. But we have to trust the Lord. We have to trust. Will you have enough money? Will you have a job? All of those things are going to go into our mind. 
will the, th will the planet be the same? No. That I know. It cannot be. When we have this much of a change, it cannot be the same. There has to be a reason. And the reason has to be that we need to change. That's the only reason. The planet was created for us to explore our potentiality of creation with the energy of the divine. And all the discordant energies that we have created, the planet cannot sustain. And the planet was also created for us to be happy. And it is written in the scriptures, the planet was created for us to create and for us to be happy. But we have created things that have made other people's, given pain to other people. So we, are not, we have not utilized the planet according to what we're, we're supposed to. And that's because God gave us free will. In our scriptures it says it's the only planet with free will. And that all the other planets and all the other uh, uh, entities and other planets are, are jealous of us because we have free will. But that free will has created pain. Maybe not from you, but I know each one of us has created pain. A sharp word here and a sharp word there. Yes, when we weren't thinking. But we have taken the lives in wars and justified it. And all of those things, when you start thinking about it, are we using this planet the way we were supposed to? To see the glory of the divine and to be an, a creator with the divine. This is what the planet was made for. And for us to be happy. You can think about it as you put a child in a, uh, in a sandbox and they create. And, and, and that's what we were supposed to do. Enjoy creating. Enjoy the possibility of creating. Enjoy our life and be happy and full of divine energy and give credit to the Lord. But what we have done is we have taken credit to ourselves only. We haven't given credit to the Lord that he has given us this energy. And we have forgotten about our mother, father, God. And we have forgotten of our divine energy. And we have, so maybe this is resetting the simple things. Maybe this we are resetting to come back to our natural state. The state where we will, we are like children playing and enjoying, enjoying abundance, enjoying the fruits of Mother Nature, rather than destroying, enjoying uh, the the sun, enjoying the wind, enjoying everything. Maybe that's the reason we're here today, sequestered in our homes. I'm lucky. I was able to come out to 45 acres with nobody here. It is divinely ordained that this, ache, this area here is to serve Mother Nature and for us to bring up the energy in order for Mother Nature to be able to recuperate from the abuse. And maybe we have done so much that the other possibility, rather than just this virus that is sequestering us for a month or two, maybe much more devastation could have happened. So let us look at the bright side and say, okay, 
I don't know what the future will bring. I have no idea. I don't know if I will have things that I have wanted. I have no idea. I don't know when I will be seeing my family again, uh, the distant family. I have no idea. I don't know if I'm going to get this virus or not. I have no idea. But I know one thing. I can look inside of myself and utilize this time to understand who I really am and what my true feelings are because I'm not being distracted by my activities. And whatever you do, please do me a favor. Shut that TV off. Shut the computer off. Only look at it a specific time because our mind is being jarred. And that's exactly what the media wants it, to distract you. No, because none of it we know is true. Nobody knows. But we know one thing that the Lord has us in his hands. And divine energy is still flowing. It has not abandoned up us, as it could never abandon. There is a saying in our prayer. O oh Lord, never leave us. And may we never leave the Lord. And I always wondered where Mother G, why she put that in there. And then one day I was looking at the Upanishads and there it was. Yes, the Lord will never leave us. And we can say, please, Lord, do not leave us. And may we're the ones who leave the Lord. But why would that be in there? That would be in there for us to understand, for us to ask. Because once we ask, then divine energy comes into our being. And without asking, the Lord is not allowed to interfere. This is a world of free will. And so let us all ask that the divinity comes within us. Let us all ask that we should bloom and rejuvenate and grow just as springtime is waking up. It wakes up slowly. You can see it's already April and I don't see too many green leaves. Cut, some of them are coming through the, the, the leaves. But we know it's going to be happening. There is no question about it because it's Mother Nature. Similarly, we should know that the same thing will happen for us because God does not desert. But we need to ask. And so now is the time for prayer. And you noticed I didn't start with prayer because I want us to end with our universal prayer today, rather than starting with the universal prayer. Because this is the time for us to reflect. This is the time for us to ask for peace for everyone. You notice that the prayer says for all. And in all the three worlds, our physical world, our astral world, our spiritual world, let there be peace and let Peace become part of you. What will come in the future, we can only attack at the present moment. Worrying about what will be in the future takes peace away from you right now because you cannot do anything about it. Because we don't know the future. Right now, everything is up. We have no idea of the future. Everything that we have thought was going to be the future has crashed down. So this is not the time to think about the future. This is the time to think about the present moment 
and the present moment right now should be thought only about me. Because you cannot do anything right now. You're not even allowed to go out and serve and uh, help someone else unless you're part of the uh, uh, medical. Op so take time out and take time out for yourself. Nobody knows what the future is to bring. Isn't that interesting? That we are left without having a future to look forward to. So we are forced to be in the moment. To think about the future now is just to create Madhuri, my guru, Ma Yoga Shakti. Madhuri used to say, that's tickling of the mind because we don't want our mind to be quiet. Worry. It tickles our mind. It keeps the mind busy so that you don't have to look. It's like scratching. When you have a sunburn, you keep scratching. It doesn't do anything. Similarly, that is what worry about the future is right now, because nothing is certain. Nothing. But one thing is certain, that the divine is always, always ready to help. All we need to do is ask. And another thing that is certain, our divinity and our movement towards the divine and our movement towards our integration with divinity. And another thing that's certain, sooner or later, we will be coming into the golden age because this age could not be sustained. And we, another thing that's certain, that we have a tremendous amount of divine energy flowing at this time. We call it prana, adamantine particles, or whatever. Take a deep breath in. Take another deep breath in. And keep breathing deeply so that this energy can become part of you. Because prana travels on the oxygen molecule. And can you integrate this prana? Well, we can integrate it with being happy, being grateful. Otherwise, the prana cannot be integrated. If we're full of tension, the cells cannot integrate prana. They are being restricted. That's as if you put a prison around a cell. If you're worrying, if you're tense, all of these things cannot integrate. So we have certainty to a degree and uncertainty to the fut immediate future. So take this exactly this future right now, knowing that you have divine energy within you and that you can investigate what is holding us back emotionally. And let's look at our emotions and any emotion that you have that is, uh, that is of discordant energy. It is now time to release it and let it go its own way. And let us become a more caring, loving individuals in this, on this planet. And let us become one with Mother Nature rather than destroying it to work with it to bring it out, to allow it to flow. And our own mother nature, our nature inside, the body is built to rejuvenate. The body is built to re regenerate, to heal. If we treat it properly, if we give it the right amount of food, if we give it the right amount of mind, it is built to regenerate just like the ground regenerates, the trees regenerate after the winter. We also do that, but we cannot do that with worry, tension, hatred, all of those things. We can only do that 
when we are living to the fullest of our potential, the way we were created, which was full of love, joy, abundance, freedom, and sunshine. And this is the Sunshine Lecture. And I would like to close with our prayer of world peace. O oh Lord, may your hand lead us from the unreal to the real, from darkness to light, from death to immortality. May all be happy. May all be peaceful. May all be enlightened and cultured. May all attain perfection. May peace be established in the three bodies of man. May peace be established in the three worlds. May peace be established everywhere. May truth be our religion. May service be our worship. May knowledge be our breath. May world be our family. May yoga and meditation be our way. May our eyes see happy and noble things. May our ears hear happy and truthful words. May our tongues be sweet and truthful. May our bodies be divine instruments. May noble thoughts come to us from all corners of the universe. May we never leave God. May God never leave us. Om peace and love. Om peace and health. Om peace and enlightenment. Oh.